Okay, YouTubers, today we are reviewing this analog weather station, as I call it. The one I have right here tonight is the first one on the list and the second one on the list. But I'm actually I'm actually going to be paying more attention to the first one. The second one is just a cheap uh, weather meter. So it's this one right here. This is actually AliExpress. If you're wondering, this is where I buy a lot of things from. And this gives you the information about it. Okay, so here we are. This is the weather station that I was talking about that you saw online. This is how it looks in person. And this is the other cheap one. So this one's just for fun. But they do the, they do the same thing except that this one measures the barometric pressure. And this one only measures the temperature and the humidity. And it tells you if it's blue, it means it's uh, below normal. If it's green, that's the comfort zone and red means it's above normal so for example right now I'm in the south near the ocean so you see that the, our, our um, humidity tends to be on the red most of the time there's a lot of humidity up here the temperature the normal comfortable temperature in my for me for example is between 25 and 27 that's about um, 82 to 85, I would say, um, Fahrenheit. This is in centigrade. So it says right now that we're a little warm. So we are a little bit warm, but not too much. So this is fairly accurate. And for less than $2, I think it's, um, it's a good deal. You can put it on your table if you want. Or you can hang it. I normally hang it from uh, from here, put it on the wall. I leave this outside actually, and then I just open the door and check the temperature outside. So we're gonna set this aside because that's a very simple thing. And now we're gonna look at this. This is fairly big, a lot bigger than I thought it would be. <coughs> Excuse me. And it has those three functions, those three measurements. The barometric uh, pressure, the barometer, measured in both millimeters of uh, mercury and uh, what's the other thing? H Pascal, hectopascal. So if you were to go online, I live in the U.S. You're gonna see, you're gonna see um, inches of mercury, so that makes it difficult to to compare it to to the online measurements. But there are tools on the on the internet to make that conversion easy without pulling out a piece of paper and, and pen and a calculator. You also get the usual thermometer. It's in centigrade. But like I told you, 25 to 27 is comfort. Anything above that is hot. Anything below that is cold. And you have the hygrometer. So right now we're about, uh, I think 55 to 60 is comfort. Below that is too dry, so your skin will crack up. Above that is too uh, moist, so you're gonna be sweating a lot. And you're gonna feel like, you're gonna get smelly really fast. <clears throat> and as far as a, a barometric pressure, I don't think there's a comfort zone, but rather this is to measure um, the, the clouds. And uh, there's some information here in this. This is the box that it came in. And this gives you a lot of, surprisingly, there's a lot of information and in very good American, in, um, understandable English, I should say. It's not like one of those things that you see and you buy and you try to read it, but you can tell the person that made the, the, the document did not fluently speak English. <clears throat> but whoever wrote this, it's uh, they, they lived a long time in an English-speaking country, so it's in good English. You'll be able to understand it. And I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna show it a little bit to you. It gives you the um, accuracy and the error ranges. So, so if you look at, um, for example, let's look at the temperature. 
and according to this manual that the uh, error margin of error is plus or minus uh, two degrees so that would be for example if it says right here 30 we're at um, the temperature is 30 I believe no, 29 so it could actually we could actually be at 31 or we could be at 27 so anywhere in that area so that's fairly accurate if we can believe this and now we have the hygrometer the uh, accuracy would be uh, where's the high here we go plus or minus seven percent so that's fairly that's a big big uh, error so it says 60 so it could be seven it could be 67 or it could be 53 so I don't know what the uh, what accounts for that huge margin of error, but um, but this, but I think it's fairly accurate when you when you think about it. You compare it to this right here. We have the um, the hygrometer it says 60, and right here the hygrometer says um, 66. So there's uh, there's six percentage points apart. Who's right? I don't know. Now I can check the I can check the um, the, the internet, but uh, since I live right in, next to a body of water, that uh, the internet is just an average. It's not it's not 100% accurate to this very location. So anyway, let's keep going. So we looked at the thermometer, hygrometer, barometer. Now let's look at the back. There's nothing in the back other than this hole to hang it. And this, um, uh, I read the instructions, and this is just to make uh, a, uh, what's it called, a adjustment. Because this was, according to this manual, it was uh, made, I believe, 400 meters above sea level. The factory where they uh, did the uh, initial calibration. Uh, according to this manual, around here somewhere, it'll say it was 400 uh, meters. Here we go. 400 meters above sea level so that's where the factory is located so they made that up uh, prior adjustment prior calibration there's no reason why this would need any further calibration because I am around that area too I'm very close to sea level and um, if you do if you just go up you keep going up in the altitude it, it just this this is gonna start dropping this right here if you go um, down below uh, up to the sea level or even below I believe there are cities that are below sea level I'm not sure about that this is gonna start going up so you go to Machu Picchu you're gonna see this uh, Machu Picchu is in Peru South America um, that's gonna go all the way down you're gonna be uh, feeling not well but anyway that's not relevant um, so what this, uh, um, let me start reading it. It says, uh, general information, atmospheric pressure and the weather. Air pressure indicates the density of the layer of air that surrounds the earth and is generally divided into low air pressure and high air pressure according to the degree of density. Furthermore, <coughs> excuse me, furthermore, similar to water flowing from a high place to a low place, air flows, um, from high air pressure areas to low air pressure areas. High air pressure and low air pressure are relative terms in hectopascal. There is no distinct point which defines what is low or high pressure area. However, we will suppose that passing to the right of 1000 hectopascals is high air pressure zone and passing to the left of 1000 hectopascals is low air pressure zone. Low air pressure areas have comparatively large water vapor and this leads to clouds and rain. Consequently, the weather deteriorates with the coming of low air pressure and conversely improves with the coming of high air pressure. So this, go this uh, document goes on to explain that um, when you see this right here, and you start noticing, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is not good today. You start noticing this 
going to the right, meaning that the pressure is increasing, you can expect the weather to improve. And the reason why that happens is that when the, um, the pressure goes up, the water tends to just evaporate. It doesn't want to condense. So when, you, when the water doesn't want to condense, you're not going to see any clouds because clouds is just basically condensed water, semi-condensed water. So the, everything turns into water vapor. So the skies clear up. But when the weather, uh, the, when the barometric pressure drops, you, it keeps going in this direction. Water tends to to get um to come together and turn into to physical like liquid water. So you start seeing clouds. And if it gets really, really low, all that vapor simply starts into, turns into liquid water and you see rain. And this document explains that it, it doesn't really matter where the, the, where this needle is pointed, the black needle. It's what, what really matters is the trend. When you see it uh, start moving in that direction or in that direction, that tells you that, that allows you to forecast the weather. So it'll tell you it's gonna get better or it's gonna get worse. Now you'll see this movable needle. This it's just a standstill needle, <clears throat> and um, what it's for is that you, you let's say it's um, you wake up in the morning and the weather's normal, it's nice out there. So you set it right there and you leave it there, and then you come back four hours later and you notice that the black needle moved to the left. And uh, so you notice the difference. You, you can count how many hectopascals have moved from when you left it, when you left the, the silver needle. And that tells you the trend. And here you'll see more information about trend. Here's, yes, it'll tell you more information about trend and the trend uh, will um, allow you to know if there's good weather or bad weather coming. And like I said before, if it's moving to the left, bad weather coming, if it's moving to the right, it's good weather coming. Okay, and, um, and that's the purpose of this extra silver needle. Now, I'm sure it's not that simple. I'm, I'm sure those uh, weather people, they go to college for years and they have the weather radar. And they have the satellite that shows them a picture of the clouds and there's some something called the uh, I think the Doppler Doppler radar that tells you the speed of things the the speed of the wind I believe I'm not sure I'm not an expert in that field but this is just for uh, I guess for fun you wouldn't want to uh, you wouldn't want if you're a pilot for example you're not gonna be looking at this and decide well I'm gonna fly today because the, the needles moving to the right and that's not what this is for this is for regular people not for pilots not for helicopter captains or anything like that for that you go to weather.com and you do what you're supposed to and lastly over here it tells you well let me read this remember the most important feature in the use of barometer barometer is uh, barometric trend setting the barometer precisely is not normally required because it only indicates change of air pressure so it only indicates the current air pressure not necessarily which way the pressure is moving so let's go outside and see how accurate right now it's telling us that regardless of the trend and if there's been no trend today I've been looking at it so it's been at that point since morning but based on the pressure, we can expect to be um, somewhere between low pressure and high pressure. So we're going to go out there and see if it's true that we should see some clouds, but it should be uh, sunny out there. And with, let's just look at the window. Let me turn off these lights. And for the most part, yes, it's true. Let's go outside anyway. There is sun out there. So let's go. Let me pause this. Okay, we're going down the stairs.
Okay, so we're outside. So let's see if this is true. This device does predict there being some clouds in the sky. And I'm looking around. And sure enough, there are some. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But over there, there are some clouds. Let's walk over there. But it's mostly clear today. I'm trying to lower my voice so people don't think I'm crazy. It's talking on the f Well, there's nothing crazy about talking to a phone. And yep, it's true. There are some clouds over there. But the temperature, the sky I should say, is mostly clear. And that goes fairly accurate. Considering, considering this is an analog device, I think this is good. There's sun and there's clouds. And you look out here, and that's fairly accurate. That's the sun, and those are the clouds. So let's go back inside and do a quick check with the uh, local weather and see if the, let's see what the humidity and the thermometer, the, the temperature is like. So let's go back inside. Okay, we are back indoors and I'm going to use my tablet to look up um, uh, weather.com as you can see it's very dusty but that's okay but before I do that I'm going to bring a digital um, a digital uh, weather station that I have over there and let's compare it to that give me one second okay so I'm back this right here is the um, the digital weather station that I talked to you about this is what you put on the this is a magnet you put this on the on the refrigerator so right now it says 68 percent humidity and this is measuring 50 so they're they're 18 points apart and this one is measuring 64 I believe so we're gonna go online and see who's telling us the truth. And as far as the temperature, this one measures 75. But let's let's turn that 75 Fahrenheit into into um centigrade. 24 degrees. That was in the kitchen, of course. Right here it says 27, and right here it says 30. So we're not going to be able to uh, say what's, which one of this is the real one, but we can find out about the humidity. Let's see. So let's transfer to this, to the tablet, and go from there. Okay, guys, so I went online, and um, as you can see right here, it's telling me that the temperature is 29 degrees centigrade. So this one says 25 indoors. This one says 30, and this one says 27. So they are all correct as far as temperature. The annoying thing is the humidity. It says 40%. This one says 72%. This one says 54%, 53%. And this one says over 60 percent so this is indoor humidity so i don't know what the, the humidity is outside but it makes it kind of makes sense that the humidity would be um higher indoors than it would be outdoors so i'm not surprised that the it's showing a higher humidity so now i want to find out the, the um sorry for the stuttering i want to find out the barometric pressure oh my goodness 29.9 that's in inches though so let me do that conversion real quick okay so i did the conversion 
So 29.91 converts to 759.7 millimeters of mercury. 759.7. And we look here and it says 757. So that's within the range that they gave us. They gave us um so we're, we're the the average on online is 759.7. So let's let's just let's just say 759 and this one says 757. So that's within the range that they gave us here that that we saw earlier today that there's a um there's a plus or minus Five, uh, well, it says five hectopascals, so five hectopascals would be, yeah, would be about three blocks, three of those blocks, but there's only a difference of two of them, so it's within the error, the margin of error. So this is fairly accurate. So you can trust both the, um, so we just proven that both the barometer and the temperature are accurate. I was not able to establish the um, the humidity because we do have very different humidities here. Like I said, this is 70. This right here is 55 and this one is 64. So somebody's wrong and I don't know who's lying to me. So if you're going to buy these things, don't buy it for the... Um, well, well, the margin of error on humidity right here would be um, 7%. So if it says 55, it could be, it could be 48%. Or it could be all the way up to um, 62%. But it's nowhere near that 40% that we, we saw online. So I don't know about that. So I, sorry guys, I cannot tell you. I was not able to establish because I don't know what's happening with the humidity. But this is indoor humidity, so I'm assuming that outdoor humidity was going to be different. But I just don't know. So that's it for the moment. So, oh, one more thing. This one's battery operated. This one doesn't need any batteries. And this one doesn't need any batteries. I'm assuming that this is the most accurate one. But it doesn't show me the it shows me a trend within uh it shows a trend of indoor humidity and temperature but anyway i'm not reviewing this i was only reviewing these two but do i recommend this i do absolutely not so much for the these uh hygrometer but more so for the uh, for the current weather because it does tell you the current situation up there thank you for watching